Okay, so mandate one, be alert. Mandate two, stand firm in the faith. And mandate three, be men of courage. That brings us to mandate four, be strong, be strong. What do you think it means to be strong? Well, when we look at this particular verse, I believe that this verse is screaming the word perseverance. Perseverance. You know, uh, I wrote a book called Transform Seven Pillars of a Legacy-Minded Man. And pillar number six is perseverance. And one day when I was giving a talk, I was in a church and, and we were going around into small groups and we were, we were uh, asking questions about our lives and, and I had the pastor walk around to each one of the, of the groups. And when he came back to me, he said, Joe, I'm just shocked. I said, what are you so shocked about? He goes, man, my men are quitters. My men are quitters. That is something that I, I believe is, is happening across this, this great country of ours. We are seeing men quit so easily, some not even starting. Persevering is what's going to separate the men from the boys. It's basically taking us to a place where we need to go, which might be difficult and challenging like we talked about in the last session. But the reality is if we can fight through it, unbelievable transformation can happen. I'm, that's a word I really love, transformation, because it's basically saying it's taking something that was and turning it into something that wasn't, but should be. That's what transformation is. Let me tell you a story. In the year uh, 1998, I had sold my business, a newspaper at the time, to start my dream company. This company was uh, gonna do something that nobody else had ever done before. It, it took advantage of this new thing called the internet, 1998. Anyway, long and short is I raised $1.3 million effortlessly. Effortlessly. When I tell you effortlessly, I mean effortlessly. Why? Well, it was in the, the, the tech stock boom. So a lot of people were raising money on dreams, how to use this new thing, the internet. Well, it was simple for me. I raised this money and it started going out pretty good. And then in April of 2000, I was supposed to get an infusion of another half a million dollars. And that particular day, or, or the day before, I'm, I'm doing a business workshop, 500 business people are there, I fly in our spokesperson who was a famous New York Yankee, he came in and he did a great job, and the next day I'm supposed to get a half a million dollars more, which was needed. Well, the market crashed, and I lost that half a million dollars. But okay, we're still moving forward. A month later, we had a board meeting and we elected to purchase another company on a stock deal, meaning that it wasn't gonna cost us any cash. We were simply gonna give stock to this president of this company and we would acquire it. I was against it, but the rest of the board voted me down because I only owned 31% of the company at the time. Well, allegedly, he and another guy got together to do some bad things and it bankrupt the company. Now, of course, in retrospect, I realized the guy that did the most damage was me. I was the president, I was the CEO, and I allowed it to happen. So, you know what? My fault, my bad. But when the company went bankrupt, I realized now I just lost everything personally. Everything. I was urged to go bankrupt personally. I couldn't do it. My wife and I couldn't do it. But corporately, I had no choice because like I said, I was not a majority owner. They voted me down. We went, we went corporately bankrupt. Now, there was about $200,000 of corporate debt that was in that company that a lot of the people that put the money in, I knew. And I remember going home to my wife who just found out that we lost every, when I tell you every single penny, I mean every single penny. We still had a house with a mortgage, but I had three small kids. It was challenging at best. And I went back to her and I said, Beth Ann, I want to take that debt on personally. The corporate debt, which is going to be wiped out in the corporate bankruptcy, and these people are going to lose this money. I said, I want to take it on personally. She didn't even blink an eye. She said, absolutely. Well, that was one of the toughest decisions I ever made in my life, and probably the best, because that made me come face to face with what I really believed. It, it was showing me that I was alert to the situation, that people were gonna be hurt, and that this situation needed to be addressed. I needed to stand firm in what I believed in, and I needed to be courageous. And now I needed to be strong. I needed to persevere. So we took it all on, 
And for the next several years, it was very, very challenging. But because of that situation, because I did that, I'm able to lead legacy-minded men. You see, God brought me out of that. And not only did he bring me out of it, he has blessed me tremendously. But I had to go through that valley experience. I had to find out if my courage was real and I had to be strong. I had to persevere so that I could move forward. Now, a lot of times in the past, I've played the victim. Oh, woe is me. This has happened to me. Woe is me. Maybe you can relate to that. The bottom line is God's saying, you're not a victim. You're simply going through a valley experience. Look outside your own pain and see what I'm doing. If possible, and if you can't do it, surround yourself with an inner circle of people who are gonna stand up for you, love on you, and hold you accountable to get to where you need to be instead of laying on the ground. You see, when I was face on the ground and, I, my, and I'm tasting the dirt, I picked up a little nugget, and that little nugget was what I carried forward. What's the nugget you need to pick out today? What's the nugget that's gonna fuel you to get to the next level? You gotta be strong, guys. You gotta, you gotta have no quit in you. You've got to persevere. You have the, avi- the ability to be strong. Just do it. Just plug into it. Now, the interesting thing about these first four mandates, these are all deal with strength and action. But the next mandate, well, that deals with relationship. So let's step into mandate number five.